Hey there, I'm Dave, Amanda, and a year ago today, we started this YouTube channel, Dabois Homestead. A lot has changed since then. When we uploaded our first video, we lived in Manitoba, Canada on a 60 acre homestead that was pretty much already developed. We started to chronicle our lives there, and that all changed around April when we decided to sell that place and move back to Ontario. In September, that dream became a reality, and we moved all of our stuff to the shores of Lake Superior. So on this, our one year anniversary of having a YouTube channel, we're gonna roll back through all 50 videos that we've done in the last year. Just a little little snippet from each one, just a little taste of what has been happening at Don Blanc Homestead. So let's get going. January. It's about minus 23, minus 24 outside today. Minus 3 in here. Minus 23 outside, minus 3 in here. Chickens look happy. I gave them some kale, so don't go to that. We're going to give them some dry mealworms. A natural behavior for chickens is to scratch around to look for food. By spreading the worms around, the chickens will need to scratch the hay to find them. Come outside ladies, it's warm out!
a little bit warmer outside than it has been for a while and we're gonna do a little bit of coop maintenance. Uh, if you saw our last video, we installed a poop shelf. So we're gonna give you a little idea of how that worked out. Um, put down some more fresh hay, give them some food, kind of give you an overall idea of what's going on in there. Today we're going to talk about wildlife encounters. So we've seen lots of wildlife on the property from our daily encounters with birds at the bird feeder uh, to capturing animals on the trail cam. We have deer and coyote we've seen there. Nearby we've seen wolves and uh, someone just recently saw a cougar. Uh, there's no doubt those are also on our property, we just haven't seen them yet, as well as bear. So um, bears have been pretty close to the house. They, we have evidence of them in our garden uh, tracks. There's bear poo and also hair. Um, they seem to be going in under our fence, so there's lots of tufts of fur on the barbed wire fence that surrounds the property. Uh, Dave's came pretty close to a bear on our driveway and this little one, Minnow here, she encountered bear. So we have a cabbage with a rope strung through it, a xylophone, a bucket to collect some eggs if there's some in there, and some mealworms to keep them entertained. Temperatures are supposed to be going above zero next week, which is really making me itch to get back out into the garden, into the greenhouse. We've got a lot of stuff to transplant in the house right now, growing under lights. Everything in here runs off this little timer. I run things 16 hours a day. Plants all have some decent root growth, that's for sure. They, it's definitely time to transplant. This is actually kind of pushing it a little bit. I think they'll probably be just fine though. The Northeast United States has a little special spot in our hearts because we lived there for about a year in Connecticut. We came from Ontario where we grew up, Ontario, Canada. Went to Connecticut for a year for work. We lived in a tiny little cabin. It was about 400 square feet. Uh, it was heated by a fireplace. It, it was on 30 acres of bush, it was great. And it was there that it really was cemented for the two of us that, that we wanted a homestead, that we wanted this type of lifestyle. My next step here is going to be to put some wood around the outside of this cage, just to so it's not quite as flimsy. And also, I don't want compost falling out all over the place as, you know, while it's sitting in here. And if I have to pick it up and move it or something like that, so we'll get some wood put on it. It'll look a little nicer too. It won't just look like an old dog cage. I'm not sure if this stuff will really start to stink in here or not. I have a feeling it will. I'm willing to compromise a little bit of stink for a little bit of free heat in here. I'll be doing updates on the composter. I'll take its temperature every day, things like that. We'll just have a peek at it. I may not get those up on YouTube, but if you look in the description here, you'll see links to our Instagram and Facebook, and that is where I will definitely be updating. It's probably fluctuating quite a bit in temperature. When the sun starts to beat down, it probably really heats up, it cools off a little bit when the clouds roll in. I decided earlier in the week to cover this up with a black tarp. I just want to be able to maximize the amount of heat that I'm able to retain to get this thing to start cooking. It seems to be working a little. Okay, so this is showing the temperature of the greenhouse right now. I suspect it will probably drop when we put it in there. 
There's only one way to find out. Yeah, so it's still sitting at about 10 degrees, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I really don't think that things have started to cook in there. I think we'd probably see a much warmer temperature if that was the case. Let's just double check to see if the switch and the battery are working. This is a good stage to line your cans back in here to see if they're tight. So these are pretty tight, you can see. Wow, that's hot. Well, I guess we can probably all figure out what's gonna happen with this. If I get a chance today, I'm gonna see if I can supercharge that composter in the greenhouse with some of this stuff, bury it right in the middle of the pile. Obviously the pop cans face outside to collect the heat from the sun and the fans suck air from the bottom coming up through the entire unit and then blow out the top while the pop cans are heating up. So I will point the little infrared thermometer at the fan. So we can see how warm it is in there so before turning the fan on. Flip the switch. And all that warm air starts blowing into the house. I am going to prune back some of our, actually all of our pepper plants. This one in particular has quite a few little buds on it, open flowers. And we want to prevent that from happening. We want the energy going into leaf production, stem production, branch production right now. And if we let these continue to flower, they'll be wanting to set fruit. Let's grab the thermometer. So not quite as hot as it was the other day, but that's okay. It's still cooking, that's for sure. There's eight screws to remove to take it apart, eight screws to put in to put it together. We don't need much to make this chicken brooder. Four by eight piece of plywood, a few one by three eight foot pieces of pine. From the outside to two and a half inches, and then again, at three inches, start with our long pieces to build a little frame here that the box will sit on. There are various ways one could go about assembling the lid. This is just one way. And that is all the space the chicken brooder takes up when it's not in use. So we've decided to try and uh, harvest some of the seeds that were left on the plant over winter. Um, we've done this before with flower seeds, but we haven't done it with vegetables or herbs. Last year we only saw uh, one or two monarchs, not too many other pollinators. So we want to change that this year by planting some uh, plants that are track pollinators. For example, milkweed which is great for monarch butterflies. They need this to complete their life stages. It's been fun. Outside all day, planted garlic, harvested some winter seeds, planted onions, hopefully started making the monarchs happy. We might as well have a peek at what's going on in here. A bunch of this stuff needs to be transplanted into larger pots. Might be a good idea just to go count the chickens. And like I said, that eagle has been hanging around here the last few days. Could be why he's hanging around here, waiting for an easy meal. Ten chickens. We're safe. At one point in time, 
all of these jars, well, most of them anyways, were filled with food. We're down to this. The supplies are dwindling. It's a sad thing. We need to be more prepared next year. Heard the first few grouse drumming, and I've heard some turkey gobbles, so I figured we'd take a little walk around Dombois Forest in early spring. Some more pileated woodpecker damage. I'm actually surprised we didn't see one today walking around out here. These are some of the larger footprints that I thought might be bare. So that's my foot beside these other prints that they just carry on here. It's really hard to tell when the snow is like this. But if that bear did wake up a couple weeks ago, something tells me he's probably not too impressed right now. Hey guys, found these freeze-dried uh, wild salmon cat treats that our dog and our cat really love, but they're very expensive. They were on sale for $4, like this little tiny bag, not even a full ounce. So I thought I'd try to make a poor man's version with this really inexpensive, it was a $1.20 uh, can of tuna. I guess the only thing left is to see what Caddis thinks. Okay, sit. Lay down. Roll. Good girl. Here's my tanning bed. Got to kind of finish putting that together. And Jay, if you're watching, it's shorts weather. It is finally shorts weather. Can you believe that? Jay and his wife, Jen, run one of my favorite YouTube channels, Almost Homestead. I've already actually even got some strawberry development, lots of flowering going on. We have plenty of bees that make it into the, the greenhouse here when the door is open, so they do get pollinated. So a few folks know what's been going on. Time to break the news. We decided to pick up and move our homestead away from Manitoba. We packed everything up, one fully loaded U-Haul towing a trailer with a pickup truck on the back, also partially loaded, and another fully loaded pickup truck. We made the drive. Four chickens, two cats, and a dog also came with us. All of our little feather and fur babies. Of course, they'd make the ride with us. I'm excited both about all the livestock and the gardening we can do, but also some of the the natural resources that are already here on this property. For example, behind me, we have a ton of birch trees which provide us with uh, birch bark for uh, making birch tar, which I'm excited to do, as well as firewood. We can get sap out of it. And as well, there's lots of chaga mushrooms. Dave's already encountered a bear. He scared it off with a, with a firecracker. It is not pretty, but it is definitely going to do a job for us. Dave finally got the music set up, the record player. So why don't we put some music on and take a tour of the house? We can start taking you on the tour inside Dambois. We have a small square footage, less than 800. So there is three main rooms. Here's the main room. We have couches, uh, TV, 
the record player, which is essential for a homestead, plants, and then we have a Dave. Dave's reading something. Can you tell us about your book? More than a foot of snow fell basically overnight. So you know what that means. tired of having zero function and zero storage in our bathroom so I decided that my contribution to the junk project collaboration will be shelving and storage for the bathroom. And now we have storage in the bathroom. So many things left unfinished. But that brings us to one project that we did manage to get finished. Lake Inferior. So named because it is the little sister of Lake Superior, which is that way. Primary function of Lake Inferior in the wintertime is to have fun. So let's have some fun. It's time to get serious. And when I say that, I'm talking about a very serious issue staying regular. The equipment you'll be using this recipe is a scale, a hand blender, and a coffee grinder. You'll need 250 grams of salted nuts. This one is a combination of cashews and peanuts. 150 grams of sunflower seeds and 250 grams of dehydrated fruit. This one's a mixture of prunes, dates, and cranberries. Set the dehydrator to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. Lake Superior Provincial Park. Beautiful place. Pretty happy that we live so close to this. We can be here in less than an hour drive from the house. Just love it. Look at this. There are two different types of birch tree on our property. They both belong to the genus Betula. There is the paper birch, which comes, the bark comes off in larger chunks and it's usually a whiter color. Then there's the yellow birch. The, the bark is a little bit more yellow and it comes off in smaller, smaller chunks, smaller pieces. Now, as a scientist, I am naturally skeptical of, of any claims like this. However, there is quite a lot of indigenous knowledge surrounding this, which makes it have a lot more credibility in my eyes. Next step is to put your pot on top. So we might have left it go a little long. It's pretty thick in there. Well, you can probably guess, we heat with wood, primarily with wood. One of the prerequisites that we look for in properties 
and in particular in the last two properties that we bought and set up on is the ability to sustainably harvest enough wood to keep us warm all winter long as long as we plan to live in a particular place. I'm not a very big fan of your primary heat source being electric or natural gas or oil. So what the Love for Love video is about is just giving some love, paying some love forward to giving some attention to some videos, channels, that we like to watch. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take that literally and, and uh, talk about four channels that we like to watch. Some of these channels might have already been nominated, um, actually for sure some of these channels have been nominated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we really like them so we thought we'd include them anyways. My grandmother's maiden name is Keel. Mm -hmm. And that's the recipe. So we're gonna make this today. While you've got your meat cooking, it's a good idea to pull out all of your Christmas goodies and start decorating. This one's from 1982. The pie is ready. Now there's one other thing here. If you remember the recipe that we were looking at earlier engraved on that nice slab of wood, it says, serve with bread and butter pickles. Going ice fishing with a couple of friends? Wait until there's about four inches of ice. Want to take your snow machine? or your ATV, five inches. A small car, eight to 12 inches. Your truck, 12 to 15 inches. Caddis, come here. Sorry, she's chasing a coyote down the driveway. <laughs> but it also led me to write down on a little piece of paper, a little quote that said, when you wish your weeks away, years disappear. And that little piece of paper, it's like wrinkled and a little torn, but it's been on my fridge since then. It's been on our fridge. And it was a big reason why we moved here. Big part of that will be building sufficient protection from predators because that is something we have in spades here. Yes, so. actually just this morning I walked out of the house and a wolf came, we've got our trail right back there. And I walked out just in time to see a giant wolf just strolling right on through. So this is a picture of him. He's big. And I happened upon some secret mushroom locations. Not, well, maybe not secret, but no. not readily available mushroom locations, which we're hoping that will be productive. Mm -hmm. Right down to the GPS coordinates. Yeah. Can't get better than that. No. Oh, the possibility. Yeah. yeah. If anyone wants to help us build the bunkie, you're welcome to come. Yeah. our first year on YouTube. Thank you to our subscribers for following along with us. You guys are what makes this work. We're looking forward to what's coming this next year. Until next time, see ya.